Were there birds living during the age of dinosaurs? Welcome to the Natural History of Dinosaurs. My name is Benjamin Berger. I'm a paleontologist at Utah State University, teaching in the heart of Utah's dinosaur country in Vernal. The oldest bird, Archaeopteryx, is known from as far back as the late Jurassic period, at the height of dinosaur diversity. But the next 90 million years, birds would evolve and quickly diversify during the Cretaceous period. This means that birds and pterosaurs and dinosaurs were all living together for millions of years in the same period of time, the Cretaceous. In this video, we're going to look at some of these Mesozoic birds of the Cretaceous. Birds originated from the dinosaurs, and there has been some recent debate as to where we draw the line between a dinosaur and a bird. We can see if we compare the skeleton of Archaeopteryx with that of its contemporary small dinosaur Compthignathus, we see that both skeletons share many of the same features. Archaeopteryx differs in having longer finger phalange bones in the hand and a larger brain case. If we didn't have the preservation of these flight feathers, it's likely that Archaeopteryx would have been regarded as a dinosaur. The one trait that separates Archaeopteryx from the dinosaurs is that it has a hook for the retracting flight uh, tendon to the muscle supracorticoideus, which means that Archaeopteryx was an active flapping bird. But Archaeopteryx lacks a whole bunch of bird characteristics. It lacks the keeled sternum, so the flight muscles were tiny compared to modern birds. The three fingers in the hand had not fused into a carpal metacarpus bone, and the foot still retained the three metatarsal bones, which in birds fuse into a single long shaft of a bone called the tarsal metatarsalis. It has a long bony tail, and the pelvis looks like the bones found in a dinosaur, and it lacks the fused sin sacrum. Not to mention the fact that Archaeopteryx still retains teeth. So the case could be made that Archaeopteryx is really a dinosaur. The division between bird and dinosaur is really arbitrary at this level of evolution. Paleontologists just have to pick the one character that allows them to separate these two large, very diverse groups of animals. And that is evidence for powered flight through that tiny little grooved hook in the coracoid bone for the supracorticoideus muscle. We could pick another character, such as the lack of teeth or the loss of the long bony tail. And in that case, Archaeopteryx would be considered a dinosaur. In this video, we're going to discuss how Mesozoic birds acquire these more typical bird traits in the millions of years that follow the age of Archaeopteryx. There are many fossil birds from the Cretaceous, the late Mesozoic, and we can organize these fossils based on how closely are they related to modern birds. I've tried to take some of the published phylogenies that are out there and simplify these groups, although I must admit that some of these vary in the placement of fossil, various fossil birds. This is the 2006 phylogeny of Mesozoic birds by Luis Chiappe and Gareth Dyke, and I think it's a good one to go by. And this phylogeny is very typical in what we find in most textbooks. In this lecture, we'll look at each of these groups of Mesozoic birds, starting with the dinosaur-like Archaeopteryx and moving through until we get to modern Neoorthenes, the modern birds which are split into the Paleognathid and Neonathid groups. Archaeopteryx is the oldest and most primitive bird in this group, and as such has been highly, highly studied over the years. Hundreds of papers have been written about the anatomy of this creature. The specimens have held up to scientific analysis as to their genuine nature, and new ones are being discovered every few years from the late Jurassic Solohofen limestone in Germany. 
Rajo avis is a really unusual fossil bird that was discovered by uh, Kathy Forrester in Madagascar from a loosely consolidated sandstone. Now, the bird was found in the same strata as some of the best known dinosaurs from Madagascar. Now, what makes Rahova avis unique is that it's not preserved as a squished fossil on a slab of rock, but it's fully three-dimensional. The fossil preserves the pelvis bones, the leg and foot, uh, showing that it lacked a tarsal metatarsus. The pubis is projecting downward, which is similar to what we find in Archaeopteryx, and again is primitive. The more, only more advanced character in this fossil is that the sacral vertebrae are ossified together. Now, a fragment of the keratin claw was preserved, in its, and it was analyzed to find that it was similar biochemically um, to that found in living birds. So this creature is reconstructed like Archaeopteryx, but it's from the late Cretaceous, so it's much younger. Some people have argued that the fusion of the sacral vertebrae are convergent and that this animal is really a dinosaur. We lack a coracoid, so we can't be certain whether it is a bird or a dinosaur. In Laoing, China, in the same rock units that pr produce Microraptor, we find Jehoa ornis. Now, this particular rock unit is full of primitive birds from the early Cretaceous, about 120 million years ago. There have been about 20 or more primitive birds named from the formation, although Jeho ornis is unique in that it is really primitive. There are five specimens known and they're split into several species. Jeho ornis retains a long bony tail. It lacks the fused carpal metacarpalis and the tarsal metatarsalis bones and is slightly more advanced in the fact that it lacks teeth. At least in most specimens, one species has small teeth on the jaw. But what makes Jehoa ornus such a strange bird is that it had a fan-shaped tail with these long fan-like feather impressions. This is similar to what we see in peacocks, but smaller, I guess a little bit more subdued. It's thought that Jehoa ornus was a seed specialized bird. Fossils of this animal from China are beautiful, and you just can't wonder how colorful these feathers would have been in life. Now the foot anatomy, it's still primitive, as was the pelvis bones, which still look like a dinosaur. The vertebrae are slightly fused, but it still lacks a sensacrum, and the sternum is still pretty small, so it wasn't the greatest flyer. The next group of primitive birds are known in the slightly older formation, the Nishin formation, which are dated around 122 million years ago from the early Cretaceous, although fossils are known from the upper uh, units as well. Fossils are placed in a family called the Cufuchia ornithidae. The two best known Cufuchian ornithids are Cufuchia ornis and Chong Gong ornis. Now looking at them, we quickly see that they are more, much more uh, like living birds than dinosaurs. The bony tail has been lost and it's been replaced by two long tail feathers giving these birds a unique look with those two long tail feathers. Now, birds that lack bony tails are placed in a monophyletic group called the Pygiostyla, named for the terminal caudal vertebrae, the Pygiostyle, that's found in birds that lack a bony tail, including all living birds. The sternum is fused, and although it does not contain a large keel for the flight muscles and is slightly broader, supporting evidence that Cufuchia ornithids were better flyers. Cufuchia ornithids also lack teeth and have a bill. This is very similar to modern birds. So these birds had a beak. The hand bones have not completely fused into a carpal metacarpalis and the metatarsal bones are nearly fused into a tarsal metatarsalis. The sacral vertebrae are fused into a primitive sensacrum. 
Undoubtedly, though, if you saw this bird in life, you would call it a bird and not a dinosaur. The next group of birds are the ant-ornithids, which are found throughout the world and are small, sparrow-sized birds. There's about 60 species known, and they range up to hawk size. Now, most of these birds still retain teeth. The only toothless bird in this group is uh, Gobiopteryx from the Cretaceous of the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. They have further fuse the metatarsal bones and have a tarsal metatarsalis, and the finger bones more closely resemble the carpometacarpus. One of the advanced features that are found in the ant ornithids is the presence of an alula. This is a free-moving first digit on the anterior aspect of the wing. What we see in these primitive birds is that they fuse the second and third digits first to form the carpal metacarpus and retain that digit one to help provide some control in the anterior edge of the wing. The alula is like the leading edge slats that you see on airplanes. If you've ever ridden in a commercial aircraft, you'll notice that as the plane comes in for a landing, the forward edge of the wing will bend downward with hydraulics. This gives the airplane lift while reducing speed, so it does not stall as it comes in for a landing. The alula is a similar feature found in birds, allowing them a, to more gracefully land. The ornithids are a highly successful group of Mesozoic birds and resemble modern birds, well, except for those teeth. The next group of Mesozoic birds are lumped into a group called the Ornithromorpha. These birds are slightly larger and were more duck-like, I guess, in having these longer legs than, than what we saw in the ant and ornithids. There are three genera included in this group, the late Cretaceous Patagonopteryx from the late Cretaceous of South America, Veronia from the late Cretaceous of Madagascar, and the newest discovery, Hongsheng ornis, from the early Cretaceous of China. Now, both Verona and Patagonopteryx are not well known, but the newest discovery from China, Hongsheng ornis, is a pretty fantastic fossil bird and well worth a good look at. The first thing to note is that it had gastrolis in its croup, which you can see here. In the mouth, we see teeth preserved on the lower jaw, not large or recurved like in dinosaurs, but still present in this bird. The sternum is pretty big compared to the tiny sternums that we have seen, and there is a keel like in modern birds. So the sternum supported some large flight muscles. So Hongshang Ornis was a good flyer. The wing is pretty extraordinary when it comes to preservation. We can see here the fusion leading to the complete carpal metacarpus like we see in modern birds. However, the first digit is still separate with a claw, but digits one and two are fused into a primitive carpal metacarpus. This bird is a wonderful transition from the clawed fingers in Archaeopteryx to the modern wing bone that we see in modern birds. The feet are also beautifully preserved with a fused tarsal metatarsus, which is elongated for longer legs. The hallux, or the first digit of the toe, is retracted as seen in Archaeopteryx in modern birds. It also lacks the bony tail and has folding wings and a patellar groove on the knee, which is seen in modern birds. During the late Cretaceous, we see that Mesozoic birds begin to specialize into different environments. And one of the most interesting Cretaceous birds are found in North America, in the marine deposits of the Western Interior Seaway. Here, birds for the first time became aquatic, like penguins, and lost the ability to fly. These are the Hesperornithformes and include two genera, Hesperornis and Baptornis. 
Now, unlike modern penguins, these birds use their large legs to swim in the ocean waters. The wings were reduced to give the animals a more slender profile, so they were flightless. These birds lived across North America, swimming in the shallow ocean that covered the mid-continent of North America, with most fossils coming from Kansas in the late Cretaceous Niobrara Formation. Now, they still retained teeth, which likely was useful as they hunted fish and swam underwater. The birds had also thickened their bones to aid in diving. They were not the only birds to be found in the western interior seaway. The large flying shorebirds belonging to the Ichthyornithiformes, Ichthyornithiformes are found in the Niobrara Formation. The Ichthyornithiformes are the oldest long-distance flyers, and they exhibit a skeleton that is nearly completely modern. The sternum exhibits a massively large keel, like in modern birds. The syncacrum closely resembles that of a modern bird, with the sacral vertebrae fused to the ilium, and the pubis projecting backward as a small slender bone, and the ischium fused with this advanced syncacrum much like what we saw in the chicken skeleton. The tarsal metatarsalis is completely fused into the, a three-articular distal end, and the carpal metacarpus is pretty much modern. The only thing that separates these specialized long-distance flyers is that they still retained teeth. Modern birds are divided into two groups based on the condition of their palates, or the roof of the mouth. The paleognathids are the old mouse, and they have an open palatine bones, while the neognathid, the new mouse, have a more closed palatine bones. This division in modern birds is thought to have maybe extended into the late Cretaceous. Birds are the only group of dinosaurs to have survived the mass extinction that occurred at the end of the Mesozoic. It's unknown how many lineages survived, maybe just one or two, as it is only after the mass extinctions that birds quickly diversified again to become extremely diverse throughout the last 66 million years during the Cenozoic. All right, so you should now be able to classify each group of the Mesozoic birds and generalize their evolution away from their ancestral dinosaur stock. Be sure to sketch each of the lifestyles of these Mesozoic birds and justify whether Archaeopteryx should remain the oldest known bird or if it should be included with dinosaurs.